I made this shoe rack for the corner of our closet room. First I cut down some effectively 2x4s. I wasn't too accurate with the measurement here because it didn't really matter, as long as it was below a certain amount. The old melamine, just to measure up the widths that I wanted for the rack, the slats in the rack themselves. This is quite a convenient way of measuring things up and making sure that you get a consistent cut. I spent some time here thinking about the optimal way that I could get the most boards out of a single piece of half of the 2x4. As you can see, one of my push sticks is actually a piece of scrap wood, which I cut up myself. It's super useful like that because I really don't care if it gets damaged at all by the table saw. Unfortunately, not everything fitted in that one piece of half a 2x4, so I had to get another one and cut it down to size. One safety tip that I always take note of is to lower my saw blade when I'm not using it. At least I try and remember every time. I probably should have used my crosscut sled here, but I was a bit lazy and the miter gauge was right at hand. Again, things don't need to be too accurate as long as they're consistent. I don't care that much about the specific measurements. I just kind of know what can fit in that, that gap, so it should be fine. The pieces I'm cutting here now, this is meant for the, the sides to hold the rack up. Now time to rip everything to make sure it's nice and consistent. Uh, I've got to get everything the right width. Um, I had an idea in terms of measurements. I figured if I make everything 3 centimeters and I want the whole thing to be 27, that means I can have four gaps of 3 centimeters in between. Always do a test assembly just to make sure everything fits as you expect it. If anything is a bit off, now is the time to shave it down, uh, adjust the lengths as needed. I used a scrap piece of wood here just to make sure everything is equally spaced. This happened to be exactly the distance I needed between the pieces. And now to sand everything. Remember to wear a mask. The reason I decided to sand before the assembly is because there's a lot of small gaps between things and that would have been really difficult to sand with a sanding machine after assembly. Sanding unfortunately is quite a boring process, so you see me occasionally checking my phone and every once in a while rocking out to whatever is playing in my headphones. Unfortunately, I didn't do this on camera because the battery ran out, but I routed over the corners here uh, and you can see it's nice and round. Kept one edge flat for the lip of the shoe rack. You'll see in a minute why. I decided to join everything up with dowels. This is the first time I've ever done this manually uh, outside of assembling Swedish furniture. Um, it went actually quite well, but it took me a little bit of practice to get into the process and getting the drilling right and making sure everything is quite stably stuck down. I could only fit one dowel per slat, which I'm not sure was the best thing, but it kind of works and yeah, everything seems to be pretty strong. So kind of happy with the result in the end.
You can see the main frame once it's assembled. The dowels were a little bit rough, but I'm going to fix that up a little bit later with some sanding. Pretty happy with how this is held together. Time to glue the lip on. I'm quite particular about making sure this was flush with the main uh, front edge. This was the edge that I did not route over, so this is the straight edge at the front. Um, I don't have that many clamps, so I kind of just did what I could with what I have. It worked. I'm still thinking I need some more of these bigger blue clamps. They're incredibly useful. Time to cut the legs. I finally did get out my crosscut sled, uh, which as you can see is mostly made of leftover melamine boards. I didn't really need a specific dimension, again quite rough works as long as it was consistent, so I picked something that works off this piece of offcut wood that came in some packaging for a, a new tumble dryer. I sort of flip-flopped here on whether I should cut full height. Turns out it doesn't quite reach the right height, so decided to do it half, flip it over, and cut the rest off. Leaves a little bit of a ridge, but not really important for what I'm doing here. I'm gonna rip it all up anyway. Again, had to do two passes to cut this in half. Again, leaves a tiny ridge, but it's all fine. I was weirdly excited to get this very thin piece of, of laminate here. I'm hoping I can use this again in future projects. Sometimes the song you're listening to is just so good that you have to rock out. As you can see, I'm using the stuff that I already had as basis for measurements. This is a lot more accurate than measuring with your measuring tape because you're guaranteed of getting consistent cuts. I decided to use these very thin offcuts for the foot of the legs. It worked out pretty well. After some air drumming, I decided to assemble these legs. I got out my uh, nail gun after I applied a little bit of wood glue and immediately realized I was out of nails. As you can see, I have an electric nail gun. It's kind of an interesting one. My major complaint about it is that the nails aren't particularly long, and I think I'm gonna have to upgrade it sometime soon. This nail gun was really cheap, so I didn't mind too much. Every once in a while, a nail still sticks out of it, so you see me get out the hammer and just make sure that everything's flat. Now it's a matter of repeating the process for both legs, Clamping it all together, leaving it to dry for a bit, and then I'm done. Time to rock out. Now to apply some finish to the main frame. I use something called Deco Wax. It's quite a, a nice wax. It's got a very weird pepperminty smell. I'm not really sure why. It darkens the wood just a little bit, but leaves most of the original color. I know this is just pine, and it's maybe not everyone's favorite, but I don't dislike pine's color. So I decided to keep the original before, you know, applying any stain or something like that. I wanted the sides to be black, to sort of mimic the look of metal. 
This is something I picked up from 3x3 Customs. Tamar always does an excellent job in making her furniture look awesome. So I still had this can of relatively cheap black spray paint lying around. Decided I was going to spray them outside. Thanks to my wife for being an awesome camera person here. Unfortunately, I didn't capture screwing the sides to the frame. My memory card was full. I just used some screws because they're going to go against the walls within the room, so I didn't mind showing it too much. I would actually like to repaint the sides. The spray paint rubbed off a little bit when I decided to apply some wax to it. Still pretty happy with how this turned out. Remember to like, subscribe, and uh, see you next time.